Hello everybody, and welcome back to Let's Play Her Story. Last time we started off and uh, got some interesting information. Seems to follow this girl and the murder of perhaps her husband, Simon. We don't know if it's her husband or not. And uh, we got to a part where it seems that Simon got his throat slashed open by some other girl. Whether or not that was actually when he died, I don't know. But it seemed a very intense moment. Also, I got a pencil, so I won't go crazy this time. Alright, so let us search for some more words that I have written down. Oh, lots more for Princess. Seven entries found for that. Wow. Let me see. Yes. I drove in here, because I remember well, I went over the river, and then there was a church there. Yeah. And I probably part well, I remember seeing a street sign called Princess Street. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, so I'm pretty sure it must be this one. There. What is she talking about? Where is she giving directions to? can't even think of what to look for to kind of get a you know, more information about that, but uh, we'll leave that for later. Yeah, we were 17. It was a nice wedding, people said. Simon looked very handsome in the photos. His parents paid for everything, but he's an only child, so it was important to them. It was what they called a shotgun wedding. But if you looked at the photos, you couldn't tell. The dress was beautiful. It looked like Princess Diana's. <laughs> the train wasn't quite as long, though. There's a great photo of the bridesmaid helping to carry it out of the car. <laughs> okay, so they were indeed married and not just uh, cohabitating in, in a relationship. And it seems she most likely got pregnant at 17, and that's why they got married. We were obsessed with fairy tales. Not just the pretty, pretty ones, but the traditional ones. They were dark and real, bizarre and violent. Felt like life. We had this huge old book that I think Mum must have bought from a library sale. The illustrations had hidden tracing paper over them to protect them. They were in colour, shiny plates. At the front of the book was an index of illustrations. We read that more than the actual stories. We'd read aloud the captions and fit between pictures. There was something intimate about peeling back the tracing paper and dressing the pictures. The Rapunzel's hair was cut. The eagle plucks out his heart. The princess pricks her finger. Okay, so she's talking about a book for some reason. Don't know why. And I wish I knew another word to go along with princess to limit it to the other two that I have not yet accessed, but uh, perhaps we will find them in some other way. Let's go with mirrors. See if there's anything else about mirrors. Oh, a few. Eleven entries found. My name is Hannah. H-A-N-N-A-H. -N it's Pandre. It reads the same backwards as forwards. It doesn't work for merit, but it's not quite symmetrical, but well, you get the idea. Sorry. Hannah Smith, I live at 31 Gladstone Street. Alright, her name is Hannah Smith, is on Gladstone Street. I'll write a couple of those down. Did we even know her name was Hannah before? No, that, this must be the very first one. From, uh... June 18th. The mirror. I can't remember. I put it somewhere safe. Upstairs, I think. I haven't looked at it since. Silverleaf, 
No. And he normally solves them properly. This mirror, it's supposed to look antique. The reflection isn't as good. It's the perfect mirror for someone who doesn't like to look at their own reflection. Okay. That might be the murder weapon, actually. If, uh... Because if you remember, Simon's throat was cut by a piece of a mirror. Now, earlier, another thing, she said she didn't know anything, that Simon just kind of left and didn't come back. Then another thing says that it is throat cut, but we don't know what the real context of that. Let's see, I have Eric written down. Oh, there. Wow, a lot for Eric. He was wearing, um shirt, a blue turtleneck shirt, and jeans. He has a watch, it's a really nice one, that was a gift from his boss, Eric. Mm, he had his coat, a long grey duffel coat, black pants and bear. Uh, he would have taken that with him, it's not in the house. So yeah, this is before she at least allegedly claimed that uh, she he just disappeared and uh, not had died. So he's missing at this point, but not found dead, I'm guessing. Because remember, when she's wearing this outfit, these seem to be the very first interviews. Yes, there's a card that we share of Cavalier. And a band he uses for work. It's owned by Eric, but we look off. Both of them are there now, apart from the street. I'm not sure about the keys for the van. I can look for you when I get back. Van, car. So the vehicles were still there even when Eric had, or when uh, Simon had disappeared. Hmm. Yes, that would be in his wallet. It's a visa, a silver one. He doesn't like to spend money he doesn't have, so he usually pays with cash, but Eric convinced him to get that. Who is this Eric person? Uh, Eric was like an uncle to him. They were pretty close. They spend a lot of time with each other, especially when they have to go to conferences. Have you met his wife, Diane? Diane. Let's write that down. Alright, so that's all I can get for Eric. There's some later on, but I don't know how to access them. Because there's no way to get more. You can only ac get access to the first five chronologically. Let's see. I have Plumber written down. There's only one for that, the one we got it from. Let's go with birthday. Oh, all right. Yes, that's my birthday. Not one of the big ones, but I guess you can see that. Hmm. No. Well, yes. You found out on my birthday. I told him I was pregnant. Whenever we get a sort of a dramatic, like, reveal, we get this cool music. A week or so ago, it would have been the Saturday before my birthday. You know, I get like that on the weekends, have a lie in, then want to get up and blitz the house. Okay, so that's the birthday. Baby. Seventeen entries found. We spent the wedding night in a hotel in Brighton. It would have been too much to do more with the same for the baby. It was wonderful to be in a hotel, away from home, just alone together. Since then we've always tried to get away for our holiday. We couldn't afford our own place. 
Simon dropped out of school, went full time at the Glaziers. That was Eric's generosity. We moved in with his mum and dad. They had a spare room for us and the baby. If it came, it was a nice change. Time to myself, living there for those months, full of hope. Because Eric is sort of a his employer as well as somebody he grew up with. No. I lost the baby. I had a miscarriage at eight months. We carried on living at Simon's parents until that was only a few months after. It was after dinner. I had spoken to Simon's parents on the phone. I looked up for an early night and I suddenly had this thought. I think it was something his mum had said. She'd been speaking about old stuff, sad stuff, about when we lived there, about the baby. There's some boxes in the cellar, nursery stuff, stuff we never needed and I never had the heart to throw out. I suddenly remembered that when I'd looked down there the week before, those boxes, that pile, was in the wrong place. I went cold all over. I went down there with a the torch and went straight to the back. And that's when I saw the bin bags. Pulled them open, saw the body. I screamed and that's when I called the police. Wow. So it seems Simon's, I'm assuming Simon's body was stashed in a bag where the nursery stuff was. That is creepy. I wrote a couple other things down, a body and police. Yes. Yeah. It was a shock to him. I mean, we never thought it was possible. I don't know what he... I mean, I hadn't decided whether to keep the baby. I wasn't really ready to talk to him about it. Okay, so that's for baby. see much of her in this one. This is a much later one in uh, July. Most of them are in June. Oh, my tattoo. <laughs> I got it to express my individuality. It's an apple and a snake. She don't love to express my individuality. Okay, I guess for getting that video. I'm going to look up apple snake. Write those down. Yeah, the reason I got the Steam version of this was because you actually unlock achievements for uh, how many of these you access. 25%, 55%, 50%, 75%, 100%. 100%. I'm going to see if I can get 100%, but I'm not sure, but we'll see. So I moved out. Got a small bed set. Got my tattoo to mark the occasion. I was singing in the bar in the evenings, so I had some money, enough money to cover my rent. And I've been doing something similar ever since. I haven't put down any moots. I don't exist. He saw me singing one of my shows, pure chance. Not sure I remember what he was even doing there. Afterwards, I had a drink at the bar and he came over and we got talking. I knew who he was. Obviously I knew who he was. But 
he didn't know who I was. He was fascinated by the likeness. He guessed my name for letter two. <laughs> Told me it was a palindrome, like that would impress me. I enjoyed talking to him. It was amazing to be able to sit and interact and talk to him after all this time. He didn't tell me he was married. I'm not sure what he was thinking. He later told me it was like he was dreaming. A waking dream. I'm a little confused now. What I'm thinking is that at uh, 17 they were going out, she got pregnant, so had the shotgun and wedding moved in together. After she lost the baby, I'm guessing maybe they separated, but then a long time later they reconnected? I don't know. I don't know. This is also confusing. I hope I can make sense of it at some point. This written down for some reason. Why don't we get a few for that one? Black coffee, thanks. No sugar. Sweet enough as it is. Yeah. Yes. Um, I got to Glasgow. I was exhausted, so I pulled over and slept in the car. I woke up because a rubbish truck went past. I got some petrol, bought a coffee and a pastry, tried calling someone from the payphone, and then headed back. What were you running from? Coffee, I guess. Milk and sugar. Wait a minute. Let's see, this is June 18th, says no sugar please. July 2nd, asks for milk and sugar. It may be just nothing, but, um... Sugar... Sweet... I'm getting some suspicions here. They, they, it, might, it might be something too wild, but... Twins. <laughs> really? Are you really asking me that question? <laughs> Are you out of your mind? Twins. Okay, geez, that's not giving me anything, but let's. Florence took me home with her mother, hadn't been expecting twins and had a healthy baby. I guess she was just happy for Florence to clean up. Take away the evidence that this was anything but a happy occasion. There were always princes and princesses. They were the special people, more important than the other characters in their stories. We knew we were like that. Twins. Magical. We were the princesses. We had a poster of Princess Diana from the newspaper up in our attic. Had a pride of place. And underneath we used to put all our special things. When her engagement was announced, we were obsessed with everything she did. And later, when her life went so bad, we felt for her. Her divorce last year just kind of drew a line under things. I'm starting to think we are looking at two different people. That's why things have been a bit confusing. Wow. Huh. Alrighty then. Body. I think not real. His throat. It looked like a 
is trying to be in count. And then it says glasses. This is thick glasses. So I'm guessing this is the twin that uh, had married Simon, and the other one was the one who, twin was the one who actually told the story of witnessing Simon's throat get cut. All right, a couple more before we end this off. It's Rapunzel, the story starts when she's born. Mother Gothel, a witch, takes Rapunzel from her parents and keeps her locked up in this tower. Rapunzel gets pregnant by the prince, and the mother Gothel is furious, so she cuts off her hair and throws it. Actually, her hair's already short here, so that's already happened. But so she throws her into the wilderness, and Rapunzel is reunited with the prince, who's blind. But she kills him with her tears, and so it's a happy ending. Is that too much? Achievement for accessing that one. Mother wanted me to grow my hair long, but I kept cutting it myself. I wanted to look like my reflection. She always had short hair when she was little. Mother would hide the scissors, but I would find a way. Cut it with a bread knife, something like that. My reflection would always leave her house and go on adventures, but I never could. Mother taught me at home, and I had books and TV. Oh, TV was magical, but it was only on when it wanted to be, so I spent a lot of time reading books. Well then, we have discovered some interesting things in this session. I'm, I'm pleased with that. Uh, I was able to actually figure that out just from two different things of coffee. Hmm. So what else will we discover about these two sisters? Uh, you're just going to have to find out next time on Let's Play Her Story. Thank you for watching, and have a good day.